Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be installing a new oil filter housing into my wife's Jeep Cherokee here. If you're new here, welcome to the channel and don't forget to subscribe. Starting with my coolant hose here, I'm just gonna slide that on. So I was doing some work to my wife's KL here and I noticed that there was oil pulled up around the oil filter housing. Now it's a real common problem for these to leak. A lot of times the seals will leak or they'll even crack themselves. Now the stock housing is plastic, so it can be prone to breaking, and I'm gonna be replacing it with a nice solid aluminum one. Now this kit not only comes with the oil filter housing itself, but it also comes with a new oil filter, as well as all the seals that you need pre-installed. That way there's no reason to have to buy any more gaskets or any more seals. This kit also comes with new upper and lower intake gaskets, so there's no need to purchase any extra gaskets. And you wanna make sure that whenever you take your intake off, that you replace the old gaskets, no matter how old they are. Now I picked this up on Amazon. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. Now I am starting this video off with the upper intake already removed. If you need to know how to remove the upper intake, you can check out this video right over here where I install new fuel injector. I'll also link to that video in the description below, as well as one of the linked videos at the end of this video. So we're gonna go ahead and hop on this and get started removing the lower intake. Now with our upper intake out of the way, we need to go ahead and disconnect all of our fuel injectors. Now it's not 100% necessary to disconnect all of the plugs that go to your coils, but me personally, I like to disconnect everything and just push it all out of the way that way I don't run into any problems and nothing hangs up. Now on your fuel injector plugs, you are gonna have a red locking tab. That tab just needs to lift up and then you'll be able to squeeze it like a regular connector and pull it out of the way. Once it's all loose, you can just kinda tuck it in here out of the way. That way it stays out of your way so you don't run into any problems. So with all of our electrical connectors out of the way, we can go ahead and start removing lower intake bolts. Now if you want to, you can disconnect the fuel rail. Me personally, I like to leave it all connected. It's cleaner that way, I don't make as many messes. I don't have to smell like fuel and we're just gonna lift it up and out of the way and it'll give us plenty of room to do everything we need to do. Now with all our bolts removed, we should just be able to lift it straight up and rotate it out of the way. Now with our upper intake out of the way, we can go ahead and start removing our five filter housing bolts. Now these aren't your standard bolts. They're actually going to be a reverse Torx bit. A reverse Torx bit or an E Torx bit these specifically are an E8. I'll go ahead and I'll put a link down in the description below to a set of these as well, so you can order them when you order your oil cooler. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these five bolts and slowly lift it up and see what kind of mess I can make. Now with all our bolts removed, we can start lifting it up and out of the way. Now when you lift it up and lift it free, it's going to make a mess in there, be ready with some towels or maybe even a little fluid transfer pump just to get the mess out of the way. Now, I highly recommend that when you're doing this job to make sure that you're changing your oil at the same time and possibly your coolant. Now is a perfect time to do a coolant flush, get the old coolant out, get new coolant in, start fresh all the way around. So now I'm gonna lift this out and hopefully I don't make too much of a mess. So the housing is all freed up and it's pulled out of the way. I can go ahead and disconnect my electrical connectors and my coolant hose. All right, now with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and just try to clean all this up the best that I can, as well as clean up the mating surface for my intake. 
There's a lot of dirt and grime on it. I'm just gonna clean it all up real quick, get it nice and shiny. That way when I put my intake back together, the gasket will have a nice clean seal. All right, so with everything all cleaned up, we can go ahead and install our new oil filter housing. I highly recommend you connect everything that you need to connect before you bolt it down because it is a pain that's not a lot of space. It is an extremely tight fit and it would be terrible for you to bolt everything down, find out you can't get it connected, and have to pull it all apart again. All right, now that everything's connected, we can go ahead and fish it down on in. Now it is an extremely tight fit, so you might have to try to move it back and forth a little bit just to find a good spot where it'll just kind of fish in, but I assure you it will fit. So I just kind of slide it back here past that point, then go back forward and viola, it fit. Now with it down on in there, we can go ahead and get our new hardware started. We're just gonna kind of snug it up by hand real quick, just to keep it from moving around on us, just, just to get it to hold in place. And now that they're all snugged up, we can go ahead and tighten them the rest of the way down by hand. These little itty bitty bolts, you don't wanna be using an impact with them because it can tear some things up. It would be terrible for you to strip the threads in the block. Now I couldn't find a specific torque value for these, so just go ahead and snug them up real good. Do not over tighten them. Once again, you don't wanna ruin your threads in the block. All right, with our oil filter housing in, it's time to reinstall our lower intake. Do not forget to install new gaskets. With our lower intake in place, we wanna make sure that we go ahead and hand tighten all our bolts first. And then once it's all snugged up, you want to go ahead and torque it to 106 inch-pounds. Now all that's left is to finish plugging everything in and install the upper intake. Hopefully you liked this video and find it helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Once again, if you need information on how to remove and install the upper intake, you can check out my video where I'm installing a fuel injector. You can check me out on Instagram at It's Project Venture, as well as the Tickety Talk at It's Project Venture. Thanks for watching. Alexa, what time is it? It's 3.10 a.m. 3.10?